Hi, I'm Stephen King. <laughs> James said I can pick my seat. So you don't have a, a good side? Does it matter? I don't have a good side. That is matter. correct. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody feeling tonight? Pretty good. We are thrilled to have you all here tonight. We're thrilled to have James Patterson, the James Patterson. Yay. Here. So um, you heard Gabrielle mention, I, I work for First Coast News. Good morning, Jacksonville. The show starts at 4.30 in the morning. So I've been up since about three this morning, but I had to be here, had to be here to sit down with, with James. And I have to tell you, initially I was excited, but then we're backstage and guess what he tells me? A journalist. Ask any question, nothing is off limits. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to answer them. But, uh, <laughs> she that can way. ask them. Yeah, I, I'm going to ask. We're going to go there tonight. It's going to be an exciting time. You heard him mention, we do have a portion where we're going to ask some of your, your questions as well, the audience, but, but right now is my time. I get to delve in with him. James, how are you feeling? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. This is kind of fun. Go out and tour a little bit. I used to do two or three of these a day, but now it's oh. one a day. Wow. That's fine. You yeah, calm yeah, down yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Can we delve right in? Yeah, no, All right. jump in. The Secret Lives of Booksellers and Librarians. Uh, yeah. Why this book? Why now? What's going on? I, I don't know what's going on, but I, I, the idea of drawing some attention to, to librarians and booksellers, yeah, I, I, do, I do a series of books. It started with uh, Walk in My Combat Boots, mm -hmm. and it's nonfiction. And I wrote it with a friend of mine, Matt Eversman, and Matt was involved in this book too. Matt was the actual sergeant who was portrayed in the movie Black Hawk Down. And Matt's a good friend of mine. And um, he, uh, Matt and another friend of mine did some, a documentary and I saw that Matt really is a great interviewer. And he could get people talking about combat, uh, things that they normally wouldn't say, yeah. you know. And, and so the spirit of, of that book was, the, our mission was, if you had been in combat, you would say Eversman and Patterson got it right. And uh, if you're one of these people that BSs about understanding stuff you don't really understand, you would say, I really didn't understand combat at all. I didn't understand the military, and now I understand it better than I did. We did ER nurses, same thing, where you would, at the end of it you'd say, wow, I had no idea what ER nurses are all about. And it, it, I mean, it's a stunning book because of that. And then, and then with, uh, 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 and, and the title is supposed to be a little humor. It's the secret lives of you know librarians and booksellers, and it's just not about that shh, shh, shh kind of thing in the library. And it's about who they really are and what drives them and how hard they work and stuff like that. I want to speak to this because right now in this political climate, your your sweater alone says a lot. Can you guys read that? Can you see what it says? Yeah. Read Bamba. Yeah. All right. And 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 you know what? And, and it isn't it isn't even a political thing. The reality of it is, I mean, I think people, wherever they are, they, a lot of people, they don't want the government in their face, okay? So then don't put the government in our face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's just, you know, my thing is basically, I don't want strangers telling my family members what they should and shouldn't read. Mm. You know, you take care of your house, I'll take care of my house. I think that's a reasonable, you know. And I, but I want, I want parents, absolutely, pay attention to your kids. Yeah, you, know, you be, Yeah, to. you want, you know, if, if, if the eight-year-old brings home the Hunger Games, you say, let's talk about it. I don't know if you're ready for the Hunger Games when you're eight years old. Let's talk it through. Yeah. I think that's great. And also pay attention to what they're doing on the Internet and what they're doing on their phones. Right. A lot more dangerous than the library, you know. <laughs> so, Maximum Ride, March 2023, Marion County. I know this is all ringing a bell for you. We, I yeah. saw your response online. Ding, ding, ding. A, a year later, where is your, your, your mindset at this point? Your, your thoughts to see your book was on the list of <sighs> books that were not allowed in certain schools within Marion County. Yeah, taken out of the, in Martin County, yeah. No, it's just crazy. My, I mean, who cares really? Maximum Ride is harmless. 30 million kids have read it. Um, it's silly to, to ban a book like that. And, and, and what's even sillier is one woman came in who had not read Maximum Ride, yeah. and she complained, and they took it out of the school libraries. That's just, in my opinion, nuts. You know, what's, what's much more serious is, is some of the authors who have been banned and some of the, the subjects that have been banned. That, I mean, that's more serious stuff, and that's where it gets a little bit more dangerous. Maximum Ride, that just shows how silly the whole thing is. Yeah. If you're going to ban Maximum Ride, I mean, that's, you know, or Nora Roberts, give me a break. You know, <laughs> you know seriously? <laughs> 
That's, that's, the, that's, if you're going to ban Nora Roberts, you're going to ban everything. Yes, you're yeah. correct, Martin County. Um, let me ask you about this, because I've noticed you've donated millions of books and, and money to bookstores, schools, the, yeah. the libraries. Why is that? Why do you think that it's so important to give back to our local libraries, bookstores? Well, I don't know. I, this is, cash burns a hole in my pocket. You know, you know <laughs> what it is? Must be nice, huh? <laughs> it, 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 no, it really is, it, it goes back to where, where I was brought up. And, and it's all, it's, it's, it's a reflection of my mother and my grandmother. And their thing was just basically give back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my grandparents used to, you know, uh, do food, food uh, breakfast for, for uh, people didn't, that needed free breakfast on every Saturday. That was a piece of our life. Uh, and, um, and that's just the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and it generally, pretty much everything we do, it's, it's to help literacy help teachers, help, help kids go through school. We have a, a thing at the university, right? We have a big thing with the University of Florida, uh, which is, a, I think it's a particularly cool and useful program. Uh, percentage of kids reading at grade level in the country is 43%, which is ridiculous. It's just a tragic thing. And, and because of that, you know, literally thousands of kids are lost. Thousands and thousands and thousands. They have a program that they developed, not my program, but they can get that number up into the 80s, literally. And that will save thousands of lives. It will just save. Now, it's in several counties in Florida. Florida, actually, their statistics are a lot better than most places, which they don't get credit for. They have the highest percentage of black kids reading at a higher level than any other state, and, and, and Latino kids. So they're doing, you know, they're, they're edging in the right direction. And what, we're, and what the University of Florida is doing, that program is helping. Mm -hmm. but, but the thing of it is, you know, whatever you think of vaccines, but we have the vaccine for solving that problem, and now we just have to use the damn thing, which is crazy. Yes, let's do this. You know where it's getting picked up big time is Canada. Mm -hmm. It's all over Canada. And they just looked at the program and they said, this is great, we're going to use it. We've had a little bit more trouble getting it going in the States. Yeah. Uh, so, but it, but it's a really good program, and it's it's really uh, it, it's it's a real ray of a ray of hope. Okay. Uh, I'm just surveying the audience. Are there any children in here? Because they're using some language that okay. I, what? Think we're good. I didn't even start it with the language. <laughs> you know, if I'm you don't sorry, like the language, you get out. I, this is an English thing. American language. I mean, come on, you know. Um, what I, did I use so far? I'm, I'm not going there. I'm sorry, I can't do it. But right. I, I have did to I ask say you hell? about hell. Damn. He said it again. Are you, are you okay, parents? You're, you're good? He's fine. He's fine. They've heard worse. They're okay? Listen, uh, this is, I've done this for a long time. And, but seriously, if damn in hell, and I get some other ones too. So if, if you read his book, nobody, you get nobody, it, right? nobody, nobody leaves. I don't, if they do, that's okay. That's cool. I don't mean to offend anybody. <laughs> yes, they do. It's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> It, it really is all good. But I have to ask you about AI because it is uh, uh, artificial, artificial intelligence. We're seeing what's what happening is. now. <laughs> we're seeing what's happening now with what's in some cases is writing for people. As a writer, your thoughts, your opinion, your feelings moving forward with, with Who AI. Who knows? Who knows? Seriously. The only cool thing I've heard about, about AI, and it was, it's this rock singer whose name is escaping me right now. And he was famous for going out and tour in the 70s and whatever and just trashing ho hotels and stuff like that. And they asked him, you know, what do you think the effect of AI will be on music? He said, I'm not going to worry about AI until it learns how to trash a bedroom and throw a television out the fifth floor into the swimming pool of a hotel. Until that, I'm worried, not worried about the effect on music. I thought that was the coolest thing. But yeah, we don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. It's going to do a lot of good things and it's going to do a lot of bad things. Uh, so we just have to be careful of, uh, of, 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 you know, the bad things that can happen. But they're gonna, they're gonna be, there can be some really good things with AI, too. So. Do we have any writers in the audience tonight, aspiring? They're all writers. writers. They, they all, all are. Writers. We all are, right? Yeah. Any words of encouragement right now for writers? Because it's getting harder and harder to earn a decent living. I mean, obviously, I pay attention to what's going on in journalism, freelance writers. It's really difficult on all, all, all forms of writing. But forget about it. You know, you know, the thing of it is, no, honestly, it's one of those, look, I, when I, uh, the first book I, I wrote, I was very lucky, but uh, it was turned down by 31 publishers, okay? It then went in Edgar as Best First Mystery, so go figure that out. I didn't make any money, you know, but it, but it did win, it won an award. It's always been hard, it's probably, well, it's harder in some respects now, it's harder to get, to get published by a mainstream publisher, uh, it's easier to get published because online and whatever. So you can get the word out there. 
uh, making money online. Making money with it is, is probably harder than it's ever been. There aren't many publishers. And then, you know, uh, it used to, thank you so much. Uh, 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 it, it, journalism is harder. That's the hardest it's ever been. Yeah. I mean, it's so, so hard. But, you know, I, you know so you gotta do what you do. You know, here, here's the, um, the, the, the cool, I, I ran across this about a year and a half ago, and it's been driving my decisions for a long time. And I think it's actually more important for somebody who's 20 than it is for me. And, and the, the line is, my time here is short. What can I do most beautifully? Mm. And it really is, that's a motivator. That's, it's clarity. It's, you know, so, and part of it is with writers, you just kind of kind of figure out what you can do most beautifully. And, uh, but it's just like a painter. You just can't assume that, you know, you're, you're gonna be able, to make a, be able to make a living doing it. Yeah. You just can't. You're a dancer. Yeah. I'm a great dancer. Yeah, but, you know, it's the dancing thing. That's a joke about narrow, that's a narrow thing to be able to make a living dancing. So do it for the love of whatever it is? Well, for starters, yeah. Okay. The well, if you don't have the passion, it, it, it's probably not gonna happen anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. plain and simple. So you've written. God, this is so good. You know, Jacksonville, the, the water, it's fabulous. <laughs> It's filtered, James. Yeah. Filtered. So you've written a number of books with, with so many different authors, and including. Do you want to uh, write one? Me and you, you and me. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. What, what, would our, what would the title be? Where would we go? What would we write about? Uh, we write, write about uh, Jacksonville. Okay. I wouldn't write about anything. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do a murder mystery? You want to do a love story? Uh, okay. A murder love story. Yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I, yes, I have done a bunch of collaborations. Absolutely. Uh, Bill Clinton, I thought was pretty interesting as well. Who was your favorite? I, I'm just doing this a third. Well, I'm not going to do my favorite. I'm Come on. No, you said any, you said go wherever I wanted you. Oh no, no, I don't mind. I don't mind the question, but okay. I don't have a favorite. Okay. So, I'll, and, and I honestly don't. The cool thing for me about about the collaborations has been um, the friendships. Okay. So with with President Clinton, you know, we've just become friends. I mean, we we exchange. In fact, I talked to him yesterday. We exchanged Christmas and and, and birthday presents. Last year, he gave me a humidor, mm -hmm. and he knows I don't smoke. <laughs> so I called him up. I said, "Do I put bubble gum or chocolate cigars in the humidor?" And he said, oh, bubble gum. At our age, you've got to exercise our gums, you know, so. Uh, uh, but it's a nice friendship. And, and, you know, part of it, I don't like the whole political thing. I mean, I know the Clintons. I know the Trumps. I know, I know the Bushes, you know, whatever. And, and I don't get political with any of them. Um, but, but here's, a, in terms of, of the Clintons, when Sue, my Sue, wife Sue, wonderful, also is best-selling author, her book, uh, Things I Wish I Told My Mother. Soon to, soon to be, is in paperback this week? It's a really good book. It was a Times bestseller. She's, she's good. It's irritating. Um, uh, where was I going with Clinton, though? <laughs> Something with Clinton, Clinton, Clinton. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, here's Amy. I mean, people do, all these stories that get cooked up about people. The first time Sue and I went out to dinner with, with Bill and Hillary, uh, it was about three hours. We just blah, 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 blah. It was a really nice little restaurant. But during the meal, three or four times, they were holding hands under the table. Mm -hmm. And you just that's the way people think about. They just don't think of, of, of the human beings. Yeah. This demonizing people is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, Trump, whatever. I know when he's in a golf cart, eh, that's not, we're not voting for anybody. But, and, we're not, and, we're, and I'm not going to criticize anybody mm -hmm. either. But I know that like, he'll get calls from his kids, and he'll be, hey, sweetheart, how are you? Da, 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 da. So it's, you know, it's, it's always more complicated and less black and white than a lot of times we want to make it, which is, which is, that's one of the things that I think is hurting the country. We're just demonizing people rather than, it used to be back in the old days, the Democrats, and, and they would, they, you know, they'd fight over whatever. And it, it always comes down to one thing, really, big government or small government. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, get rid of the devils, and then that's a legitimate argument. Big government, small government, what's your, what do you like better? But then they would argue about it, and then they'd go out to dinner together, the Democrats and Republicans. And, uh, you know, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. You know, my, uh, and one of the reasons I don't get into political stuff, and, I, and I'll go on CNN, and I'll go on Fox, and I'll go on MSNBC, but my grandfather, when, when we were kids, in a close family, and we would have always, you know, Thanksgiving and Easter and Christmas, all family together. But his deal was, he was the nicest guy in the world, really sweetheart, Every, everybody loved uh, my grandfather. But he had a rule. And, 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 and no, no politics, no religion. 
And if you broke the rule, he'd show you the door. That was the deal. You know, he started talking politics, religion. I'm sorry, you're disinvited. Had it, <laughs> go on home, you know. If only we were like that on social media, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets yeah. kind of ugly and It dark. put a lot of stations out of business, though. So we, we spoke, I mean, I asked the question earlier, any writers in the audience, we had a lot of, of hands that went up. So There's only like two. We, uh, stop it. There, there <laughs> were a lot of you. So, All right, okay, four. So we do have to speak to that because I know a lot of you are looking for some guidance. I mean, this is James Patterson, for goodness sakes, and I've seen you. Um, I have a class, a master class on, the ma yes. well, master class, a writing thing. I, yes. Not that I need the money, but it, it actually is pretty good in terms of, I don't, I don't give advice. I never do. And, but you watch a master class, and it just says what I do. And, and you may find some of it useful. But the only thing I always say about it is if you do it, uh, the stuff you're shaking your head at, ignore, because you're already doing that. The stuff that you're shaking your head, that's the stuff you need to pay attention to. Because you're only, you're only going to get better. You're only going to change if you learn new things. So it's this stuff that you need to like think through and go like, oh, well, let me think that through a little bit because I'm not doing that and maybe that will be useful, helpful, whatever, yeah. So I'm going to leave a lot of the questions when it comes to the eating? car. Ice. There's ice. Oh, you had ice. That's cool. All right. Cool. <laughs> I thought she had like mints and she wasn't sharing. No. I don't always share. So I'm going to leave the, because we will have a section where the audience will be able to ask questions. So I'm going to leave the, uh, the more detailed questions about each character in the books to the audience. But I do want to ask Don't you, ask me detailed stuff like what happens remember? when. I don't, don't you remember. know. Yeah. Okay. But what this, book was that? This I remember. This is, this is the worst. I'm on one of, uh, what the, Matt Lauer, wherever he used to be on. And he asked me Today. this question. This is, this is awful. No, I, you know, nobody remembers Matt Lauer. For good reason. We remember a certain thing about him, but the door closed and the buzz. Oh no, I never, never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, what is that? That's nothing. Okay. okay. A door and a buzzer? I mean, seriously. Okay. So anyway, um, but, but so I'm on the Today Show, and he says, well, well, tell me which Alex Cross book this came from. Alex is walking through Georgetown, and he stops at this street and goes to this street. And I'm like, what book? How do I, I'm supposed to remember that? You know, that's like, tell me about some murderer in the scene or something, but not like nothing happened, you know. <laughs> you couldn't remember that. No, who much. could? Who, nobody I, would I remember get it, that. I get it. Yeah. But, but this I do have to ask, and I do need an, I need an answer on this one because I. Have I not been giving you answers? Well, some things you were just like, you don't want to go there. Okay, so Alex Cross, right? Yeah. I was so curious to know if, if race is something that you actually have in mind when you're developing these characters, because Alex Cross, he's huge, and he, he's, a, 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 he's a black character. I want to know oh, yeah, he is how black. you're able to get yeah, into right. that mindset. How, well, how do you decide that? I don't that? know. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you where Alex came from. I grew up, the town I grew up in was about a third black. Tough town, tough little river town. I did a documentary a few years back uh, murder of a small town, and it's about Belglade, Florida, which at that point was ranked the number one most violent small town in America, and my hometown, Newburgh, which was ranked the sixth most violent small town in America. And so I kind of grew up that way. My, my uh, uh, grandparents had a small restaurant, and the cook was a black woman, and at a certain point, she was having problems with her family, with her husband in particular. And uh, so she moved in with us for three or four years, and she didn't have you know, household duties. She just was the chef at the, at the restaurant. But I spent a lot of time with her family. And I loved them. They were great. They were funny. They were smart. They were, the cooking was great. The music was great. Everything about the family was nice. I preferred being at her house than being at my house. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit about where the Cross family came from, that kind of thing. And also in those days, um, which is before your time, but Hollywood would do it. Hollywood, they're so like, you know, phony. <laughs> they really is. You know, at any rate, but in those days, pretty much every time there was a black person, black male, he'd have a boom box on his shoulder. Okay? And so the idea of creating a black uh, detective who wasn't that way, mm -hmm. who went to Johns Hopkins, da 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 da. And that's why Morgan Freeman took the part. Yeah. He said, he said, Alex is, is, he's bright, he solves problems with his brain, not with his muscle, da 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 da. Um, so that, that's kind of where it came from initially. The yeah. stereotypes drive some people crazy, so it's good to see that you went in a different direction. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah stereotypes are a disaster, you know. Yeah. Now, we, we have a series coming from Prime, uh, uh, Amazon, I think it's going to come in the fall. They're going to start advertising it soon. And, and they, they love it because it, 
uh, Reacher's a big hit for them, and it tested better than Reacher. So, and it's very good. And I, I really said, let's please make this edgier than the books and more accurate and more provocative and controversial, whatever. But it's, it's very, very good. Aldous Hodge, I don't know if you know him. You will know him. He's great as Alex. He's a hunk, and he's a really good actor. <laughs> and he's a hunk, and he's a really good actor. No, he's really good. And it is edgier, and the stories are really... I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's so a, is he it's a hunk? Can he compare to your hunk? Not really? No. <laughs> uh, hunk, hunk is not... Hunk is, not, hunk, she says. hunk is not a word that I can apply to myself. <coughs> so there are so many interesting facts about him. All of you likely know, you, you've read about um, um, James as well. But the, you working in a mental institu institution, and that's how you started reading. Uh, right. Tell us about that. I thought that was mind-blowing. Like, what? Uh, yeah, I, my family moved up to Massachusetts right after I graduated from high school. And I didn't have, we didn't have money, and I needed money to get through school. And... Uh, so I got a job at McLean Hospital. At, at that point, that was one of the two really big, very successful, whatever, great reputation mental hospitals. Um, and it was just a great job. It was a great job. I was an aide, and uh, James Taylor was a patient there. Uh, uh, and um, uh, he wasn't famous yet. He was, uh, he, he was I think he was 18 or so. And, and he used to sing at the coffee shop. And if you can imagine it, he would sing like three times a week. And he had, he'd already written Fire and Rain and, and Sweet Baby James. Some of the, and he'd be sitting there, and I'd be this close to him. And he'd be singing Sweet Baby, you know, and it was fabulous stuff. Robert Lowell, the great poet, he was uh, a, a patient there. He would come in and out a few times while I was there. And it was just a great experience in terms of... Um, you know, growing up in a, in a small town, and all of a sudden it just opened my mind up. And I also started going into Cambridge two or three times a week and just picking up paperbacks. And it was all, you know, highfalutin stuff, not the kind of crap that I write, you know. So, you know <laughs> really, uh, uh, Ulysses and, you know, but, but stuff that woke me up. It got me thinking. It, got, it turned me into a different kind of person. And, uh, uh, you know, so it, it, it really, it was, it was very helpful for me in terms of developing as a human being and then, uh, and beginning to write uh, in, uh, um, you know, whatever, whatever it has turned out to be. That's, that's where it started. Started in a mental hospital, yeah. <laughs> so there's a jingle that's likely familiar to all of you. You may have not known, but he's tied to it. I don't want to grow up. I'm, I'm a, a Toys R Us kid. kid. Da, 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 I, when I was in advertising, I wrote the Tories. I didn't write the jingle, but I did, I did write that campaign. Yeah. I was in advertising, but I've been clean for over 25 years. <laughs> well, yeah. What's your jingle? Well, I, don't, I don't have one, and I'm not going there. So I, I know there are so many people in here right now that's perhaps in advertisement or different um, um, businesses, and you, you want to perhaps take that step and start becoming a writer full time. Any words? Or for you them? just How have a goofy question. We'll do yeah, it. like ch ch like uh, uh, Castle or whatever. Why? What was it like? You know. Yeah, who's got some good questions? <laughs> Funny ones or bad questions? Let's start with bad questions. Anybody? Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Uh oh, we have a hand up. Where? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there limits to things that I would that I would try to write? Yes, for sure. I, uh, things that I don't either get or don't have an interest in. Um, I could not write a book like from a general's point of view. I don't really get it. I don't get the tone. I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to do, you know, romance. I could do love stories. I feel comfortable with love stories like my wife. I'm totally in love with my wife. My lines about Sue is if Sue ever leaves me, I'm going with her. <laughs> so, uh, but the, 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 the real, uh, to me, which t captures our relationship is every once in a while, and she could say worse, every once in a while there's a couple of hours where I can't stand her, but there's never a day goes by that I'm not in love with her. Wow. And that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have another one back there. How does the collaboration process work? What, you want to go? You ready? <laughs> the, we alternate words, you're too slow. <laughs> um, it, it varies. <laughs> It varies with who, with who I'm working with. Uh, I will always write a very long outline, which can be anywhere from 50 to 90 pages. I then ask the collaborator to contribute for two reasons. One, I want 
their, their thoughts. And secondly, I want them to be involved emotionally. And, and sometimes they'll, they'll contribute a couple of thoughts and they'll go, well, now it works. And I'm like, okay, great, <laughs> let's do it then. Um, and, th and then it really just de depends on who I'm working with uh, uh, in terms of how involved I get. I, I insist on getting, I, I curse, they're leaving. I didn't even curse that time. There was no curses and they leave, you know. The cursing, that keeps them here. It doesn't okay, make them go, okay. yeah. More cursing, damn. Bathroom break, it's yeah, okay. No, sorry. Uh, but I will, I will uh, get pages in every couple of weeks uh, and, and then get right back to it. Unlike the publishing business where the book comes in after a year, year and a half, and they go, this isn't what I was thinking about. And then you're, you know, then what do you do? Uh, but with me, it's, it's, it's very quick back and forth. Yeah. With some hands in the back there. Or, no, right here. Yeah. Right. A little closer. Go ahead. The last book I read, Gabriel Garcia Marquez has a book out called Something August. It's very short. I just read that. Um, I forget the, there's another word, but, but it, August is one of the two words in the title. That's the most recent. Um, I'm reading a, uh, where's Maggie? Uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey, Maggie, Mis you? mystery writer. Uh, now writing with Grand Central, blah, 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 blah. Harlan Coben, I mean, he has a new one. It's not out yet. You guys can't read it. I'm reading it. <laughs> it's not out. They want me to blurb. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go ahead, right over here. Yeah. No, they, the publishers never have any ideas. <laughs> No, that was not a, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, it actually started by accident. I, I have a friend, Peter DeYoung, and uh, we played a, a round of golf. Uh, tragic, stupid thing to do, but we did it. And, uh, and he's a writer. He's written uh, oh, 30 or so articles for the New York Times Magazine. And we just started, I, I had this idea for a, a golf novel. And, and we just decided to do it together. It was fun. And advertising is very collaborative, and I did that for a while. Uh, writer, uh, art director sitting and we just go back and forth. But collaboration, uh, people act, act like it's like some obscene act. If, if the world is gonna be saved eventually, it will be because of collaboration. Sistine Chapel, collaboration. Many, many, many painters up there. Almost all television shows, uh, you have, you know, the Alice Cross thing, they had a writer's room, I think eight writers. They sit in the room, collaboration. It, just a ton of things. Stephen King has collaborated with uh, uh, a couple of people. Uh, I think he did one with his wife, and he's done a couple. Peter Straub, I think he did a couple with. Over there, yeah, lady, glass, there she is. Yes. <laughs> that, did I collaborate on any episodes of Castle? That was a, a rumor, uh, uh, and, and it's totally not true. Um, but here's a castle, or a castle story. So. I, I've been on this show a few times, and I, I was taking a plane ride, and I'm walking down the aisle, and this woman points at me. She says, I know you, I know you. So I, I stopped, and you know, it would be nice, and whatever. She says, y you played Patterson on Castle. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'm going to play him on this plane ride, too. So, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's my Castle story, yeah. Right there, we're going to come right back there. That I just love the way she threw her hand up. Yeah, I don't, I mean, the only thing you have to be careful of, in my opinion, is, especially when you're starting out and you start reading a certain kind, a certain author, and, you, and then you, that, that voice gets in your head, and, and that's a problem, I think. I, sometimes people will praise people because they write like, uh, uh, you know, these great Chandler and whatever, and I, you know, why are they praising somebody because they're ripping off Chandler's voice, you know? I, I, don't, I don't mean that seriously, but a little bit. Why is that such a great thing that you, you're writing in the voice of somebody else? Uh, and, and getting a voice is, and one of the things, like with what I do, there's a lot of different voices. Fortunately, I'm schizophrenic, so I have a lot of voices in my head. <coughs> um, but, you know, the kid stuff tends to be very humorous and very different, I funny, stuff like that. Um, and, and even with the, you know, like uh, 12 Months to Live, the, the voice in that, if you haven't read that, that's, a, I think, a particularly cool book. Uh, the stuff I do with Lupica, I think, is, is particularly good. And that voice is very different than the Alice Cross books and very different from the Women's Murder Club voice. There was somebody here that I stiffed, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. What would you say your biggest failure? Failures. 
Uh, well, I haven't overcome it. You know, I, I don't know. I, think the, I, I don't think about failures because I don't look backwards too much. I'm always like, like what's the next thing? Um, I, I always have this notion that big, you know, biggest strength is biggest weakness. So probably the fact that I'm so fast and I have so many ideas, and I, you know, that's probably the biggest weakness because sometimes maybe I don't go as deep as I could. So, you know, that could be, that could be considered a weakness. So I, I could, you know, I could only write one book in my lifetime, or I can, you know, do what I do and be just a, a, a book whore. Yeah. <laughs> Where, you can pick one for me. Are you sure you want me to pick them? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go with it. Yes, ma'am. What's been the most challenging? The most challenging. The trouble is with that kind of, I, I don't, you know, I just don't know the answer. Most challenging. Um... I, they're all, you know, they're all a puzzle. They're all something to solve. You know, I mentioned the walk on my combat boots, stuff like that. All right, so uh, Matt and I go out and we do like, you know, 120 interviews, okay? And the, each of the interviews is 40 or 50 pages. That's not going to work in a book. Did we do something wrong? <laughs> what? What happened? Yeah, I'm, I'm not paranoid. What's going on here? Um, I, I got it. We're, we're good, Dave. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, so so the, the problem is, okay, how do you turn that into something readable? And what we did is we would do the, cut these down to five and six page things in which you tell a story and also give a sense for that particular, or you know, in terms of, of, of this book, same thing. Uh, you know, and, and you know, the thing about the booksellers and librarians, uh, like one of the, it was a great thing in terms of booksellers, in terms of how they hire, and, 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 and pe people think that, you know, booksellers are just going to be all day in the bookstore just reading, reading, reading. That's not true. <laughs> Those bookstores have to all be stacked and blah, 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 blah. So one of the questions that she will always ask is not do you like to read. It's like, do you like to clean toilets? Uh, which is real. I mean, that's, that's part of the reality. And, and one of the things people don't understand about booksellers and librarians is how hard they have to work. Yeah. And yes, they love. And the joy of it is... And for both booksellers and librarians, is is hand selling, recommending stuff for people, turning them in, having people come back and say that book that you suggested, I loved it. I mean, that's 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 the big joy, okay, or, or gonna, one of the big joys. We're gonna break protocol since that's what he likes to do. We have yeah. folks who are listening. Watch this. She goes left, online. I go right. Back in the back <laughs> far. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. Yes. Folks who are listening online, we want them to be able to hear as well. We're so go man. right there after this lady who's standing, and then yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, and then we're going right here. Yeah. My books have been coming out at bookseller. You you bookseller person. Mine have been coming out on Monday forever. Uh, I, there's probably a couple other, but yeah, I didn't do it, but the publisher's been doing it. Oh, they want mics? Now, we can hear them, and we repeat the question, so I other think people it's for the. Yeah. I think it's for the online people that are Zooming. Oh, the online people. The mics people. will roll in. If they're so. not coming, we don't care about them as much. <laughs> they could have come. All right, no, I'm you. kidding. We love the online people. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. So... Primarily, I wanted to start with an admiration kind of situation, just because um, I think it's important that we do shout out our librarians and booksellers. I know a lot of us here probably have a background story of some kind from maybe we had a local small library where this special magical librarian first showed us our our first library card, our first book. Sure. Uh, you know, some kind of story behind it. Myself, I walked two miles each way to... Um, Emily Tabor Public Library, which was one of the first female-owned libraries in the entire country okay. at the time. Um, so I'm sure we all have those stories. Um, I recently found myself fighting um, with my local county commissioners over a measly $35,000 budget to keep our library open. Um, that was for three salaries, for keeping the building running, all of the, the, the facility needs, uh, and the programs and books themselves. Um, they wanted to cut that budget even more. So when we, when we can get shout outs and we can get more visibility to our librarians and our booksellers, it's always a great thing. So I, I just wanted to thank you very much for giving mm. those hardworking men and women a, sh a shout out, uh, yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. And that's that's what it is. Because they're yeah. working yeah. with nothing. They're making something out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they're thank geniuses. Thank you, thank you. That's so much. Yeah. And thank you for... 
here's, here's one thought for libraries. And you know, when I was in average, and part of the, you know, people talk about me with the marketing and blah, 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 which is, it's a piece of the puzzle. But here's a, here's a thought for, you know, you go to New York or Paris or London, and you'll see over a lot of the big uh, museums and stuff, big banners that are really exciting and cool and whatever, and they just sort of welcome people in, you know. The idea of, of libraries putting a big banner and it just says the free store, the free store, okay? In terms of repositioning, the free store. If you had the free store in the mall, you'd have a line around the block. The free store, wow, yeah, this is good, man. Everything in here is free, yeah. All the books, really free, yeah. They don't think that way. You need to change the way they're, just that instant thought. You ha it's gotta go from like, eh, you know, shh, that, you know, the old cliche. No, that's not true anymore. It's the free store and it's really cool. You need to change that headset so that they, you know, and that's one way. And anyway, so the big banner, free, the free, it's written in crayon or something. I don't know, and it's big. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Um, on the topic of libraries, um, I'm sure you've been to quite a few of them. Which one was your favorite, and why is it the Jacksonville <laughs> Public Library? What is his favorite thing? <laughs> I don't have a favorite library. Yeah, the one I grew up with. My mother was a, my mother was a teacher, and then on Saturday she worked in a library, Newburgh Newburgh Public Library, Newburgh Free Newburgh no Newburgh Free Academy. Which actually, it was the high school free. It was free to go to high school. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so that's still, I mean, the, the, the big public, New York Public Library is incredible. But you know what, there's so, I don't, I don't remember having one that I didn't like. Uh, they're all, you know, they're cool and they're all, and some are very small and cool and tucked in a corner and some are, some are huge. It's, it's unbelievable, some of the libraries you go to. So you I hate rules, yeah. You've written several types of books, adult books, kids books, non-fiction yeah. books. What is your favorite genre to write, and which is the easiest for you to write? Uh, I, you know, it's all easy. I don't, if, if I don't think I can do it, uh, and once again, getting back to that thing of what can you do most beautifully, I, I, if I think I can do something, you know, beautifully, I'll do it. I'm doing, I can't tell you who it is, but there's a, there's a star now that I'm doing a novel with. I'm so excited about it, and I can't wait. We haven't, we, we're not quite ready to announce it. But, when, but I get so excited. The, I, I have a book um, um, that I, my, uh, Michael Crichton's widow, uh, the state came to me, and they said Michael had started a book. He died 13 years ago. And um, at that point, his widow was pregnant, and he never met his son, John Michael. And, and she said, I, I, he was writing this book when he died. It was about Hawaii and this volcano that happens there. Anyway, but she said, do you want to... Uh, finish it. And I said, I don't know, let me read what he wrote. And he wrote about 100 pages, and, and they were great. It had this hook, there, there's this monster volcano which is about to destroy the island of Hawaii, but there's something even worse there. And I said, ooh, this is cool, I like this. this is, you know, so I, w I do want to write this, uh, and, and partly because I want to know what, what the hell happens at the end, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry, hell. Um, hell is okay, purgatory, hell, heaven, it's all good. Um, uh, but, but, and the other thing about it, the challenge was, you know, with, with Michael, he always has a lot of science in his books, and I never do that. So that was a really cool challenge. Uh, 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 so so I, I just, I love that uh, in terms of doing it. So, so that was uh, joyful. Um, the the uh, Dolly Parton thing was a lot of fun. Um, Dolly and I also, she called me, you know, <laughs> the, first, the first year we were working together, she calls me up on my birthday, and she sings happy birthday over the phone. And it's like, oh man, that is so cool. But what I wanted to do was say, Dolly, I want you to call again. It's gonna go to voicemail. And when it goes to voicemail, I want you to sing it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have the guts to do that, so I didn't do that. And, uh, but we still, and she, she called me up on my birthday, it was in March, and she called me up you know, on my birthday. She didn't sing this time, but you know, how you doing, da 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 da, it was fun, it was nice, yeah. So that, you know, that was cool. But there are always, I mean, you always you hope everyone is gonna be great and you know the idea is good, and then, and you just never know. You never know if it's gonna turn out. But, but the kids' books are a lot of fun, and, and, and they're funnier, which, which I like. Alice Cross, not so funny. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Gabriella doing that Gabriella has again. someone back there. Yeah, oh no, we're, oh, oh, I'm sorry, you have somebody with the mic, yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, no mic, uh, I'll, I'm gonna go there anyway, don't worry about it. I'm going there right after, yeah. 
your brain goes really fast, and I imagine you've done a lot of these and had a lot of questions. So what question have you always hoped somebody would ask you that you haven't got the answer that you would love to? I know you're married, and I'm beautiful, but no, I don't know. I, you know. <laughs> just kidding, honey, just kidding. <laughs> Those are the old days. I'm, I'm past that now. Uh, I, yeah, there was, that was a fake question. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Um, just a question. Have you ever gotten stuck when you're developing a story and you just don't know which direction you want to go and you're just, nothing's coming to mind. Have I ever got stopped? Yeah, the writer's, I've never really had the writer's block thing. I have more writer's diarrhea. <laughs> um, you know, but it, what I do, and which I think is, is a good thing for writers to consider, is if I get to a chapter and it's not working, I just keep going. And I, and I go, TBD, I'll get it the next draft. Uh, and I think that's a good idea because sometimes and they just get stopped, and then it really starts to become a head thing, and you know, so just go to the next one, and, and, and eventually you come back, and maybe two drafts, it still isn't working, In the third draft, you decide, okay, I'm gonna make that two paragraphs in the next chapter. <laughs> it will no longer be its own chapter or whatever. You know, you figure out a way to do it. The funeral was great, but you know, whatever, yeah. Have you ever had a story start to tell itself? A character goes in a different direction that you were heading? Um, I, yeah, I, all the time, constantly. <laughs> you know, <coughs> I, do, I do the outlines, but I don't follow them slavishly because you just don't know. And, and all of a sudden, you'll start writing you know, a, a, a villain, and you go, wait a minute. I can't knock off this villain in this book. <laughs> I like this. I don't like the villain, but I like... I like writing about the villain, or uh, something happens with Alex or with the Women's Murder Club, and so it has a life of its own it, uh, to some extent. So that I think that always happens. I always, you know, in the outline, I always have the ending, but I om it's almost never the, the ending that's in the outline. I almost always write a new outline. Way in the back, yes, ma'am. Have you ever thought about writing a book about your travels? Have I ever thought about right? You mean like why? The, 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 yeah, book about your travels. My travel, my travels, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My night in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen tonight, huh, honey? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I have. I don't really. I haven't traveled that much. I, my autobiography, you know, such as it is, uh, 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 it, it would surprise you. It, you would think it would stink, but it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Where, where are we next? Do, do the characters ever go in different directions? Then I think they're, yeah, they're, yeah frequently. You, you, I, I like to keep open to the possibilities. And you're writing a chapter, and all of a sudden, it's going another way. The other thing I'll do is sometimes I'll do a draft, and I, I will purposely go, this chapter went this way. What if this happened? Uh, uh, just, to, just to shake it up. That, that's always something I like to do. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, the guy with the mic in his hand? Yeah, yeah OK. All right. Re really love your books, especially the Cross series. Um, when I read when I read that series and other series like that, those those types of uh, characters, it makes me wonder where you where you get the research for, you know, the the serial killers and that type of thing. Yeah, you go out and you meet them and you interview them. <laughs> I don't, you know, um, there's a lot of material available, and, and, and I do have uh, some research. You know, if it's Hawaii, I go, well, I'll go, I'll do this research. If it's a crack house in the Bronx, sometimes I go, well, you go cover that one for me. <laughs> you know, are you going to go meet a serial killer in jail? Yeah, you can, you can go do that one, too. No, yeah. We have a mic. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I have a question. I, I self-published a book 14 years ago. I, it's a murder mystery, suspense yeah. novel. And one of the very minor characters, after the book had been out a bit, I'd sold several hundred copies, everyone asked about the one character that was very minor, a brother yeah. of the main character, and what happened to him, and you should take him somewhere. Have you ever done that with a minor character in one of your books for the next book? Uh, have I ever taken a minor character? And I, I, you know, off the top of my head, no. But I have, I mean, you know, Samson is hardly a minor character, but I, I did do a, a sort of a Samson as the, as the lead character uh, last summer. Um, Samson in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Amazon series is pretty cool. It's the, um, it's the Old Spice guy. <laughs> 
And they were going, oh, we can't use the Old Spice guy. I go, what are you kidding? This guy is great. He's an actor. And we're going to, like, not put him in because people are going to go, oh, that's the Old Spice guy. He's great. He's great. He's really good. a really good actor. And he's another hunk. You know, what can I say? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, so since it's Master's Week for your research uh, related to your goth series, yeah. did you get to play Augusta? I, I, I haven't played it. I did... Um, Gary Player's son had kids in the same school that our, where our son was. And so we got invited one time to stay in, Gar in Gary's, it wasn't his house, but the house he rented for his family up there. And that was great. That was great. So we went, we actually, we went to the Masters with Gary one, I think it was his third day. Uh, and he took us to lunch there, and then he took me, because no women were allowed in the secret room with the green coats, whatever that's supposed to mean. So I went back, I looked at the green coats with Gary, very exciting. And uh, not. <laughs> um, um, and, then, and then the next day, or after the Masters, he had a tournament, not, not on that course. So no, I haven't played. I did, I did put on a plea, but it was not answered by anybody. So... Uh, <laughs> Here's my, uh, here's my sports uh, uh, highlight reel. Uh, I could dunk a basketball in high school, which you won't believe, but it's true. And I have nine holes in one. So uh, that's, my, uh, that's, my, that's my sports reel. Sue has six. She's really, as I said, irritating. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Um, I've done a lot of studying. See, that's nice that she would say hi. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, I like you. I've done you. a lot of studying of uh, drama and theater arts and stuff like that. Um, but now, it, to further my education, uh, to put a toe into actually accomplishing something as a writer, I've been reading, uh, actually watching a lot of videos on YouTube, which boils down mostly to marketing. And they talk about what is your niche, what is your sub-niche, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah is right. So, uh, one of the first books I read in college was by a man named Boleslavsky, who's Russian, one of the Stanislavsky's cronies. And it was the six lessons. And one of the lessons was observation. Yeah. So I've been observationing uh, since then. <laughs> and uh, my thing is, I could probably come up with a plot. Basically, I need to know what I am, what's it about? How do you know when you know, when you find something good to write about? How do you know? I mean, you just at this stage, I, I you know, I, I'm so far away from, you know, the beginnings of of trying. You know, it's it's, it's automatic to me now. Uh, I just kind of I know because I've been doing it so long and so much, and and, and you, you know, it's like anything else. You, the, one of the nice things for me though is I feel in the last year or so I'm doing better than I ever have. I could be deluding myself, but <laughs> uh, but I feel that. Uh, and I think there's some accuracy to it. But I, I don't really know the answer to that. How do you know? Um, I, you know, I, it, it, there's so many pieces to it, too, the character, the plot. I, I'm really big on outlining, uh, and, and it's a lot less painful than you do your outline, and maybe it takes you a couple of months. But better that than to get halfway through your book a year later and go like, I don't know what, what happens after this. So that's not a good answer, but I don't have James, one. within the past 15, 20 minutes, you've been doing an excellent job with your language. I'm about to ask a question for a 12-year-old in the audience. Let me just give you a heads up about that. Here you go. Oh, I don't care if you're 12. You think? <laughs> I can hear cuss words. Tell me. You, um, no, never you mind. Do you prefer to handwrite your outlines or type your outlines? Uh, I handwrite everything. I don't. I don't. I haven't typed in a long time. I used to type in the beginning, and then I got back pain, and I used to have to like lay on the floor, and you know. So, so I, I everything is handwritten. So it's uh, yeah. You want it? Want one many pen? Want one of my pencils? <laughs> oh, my half pencil? Yeah. yeah. I don't have one with me, but <laughs> figure out if you if you ever can find Maggie, and 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 tell her where, and I'll, and I'll send you. I'll send you a, a half. <laughs> A half-used, bitten-up pencil with an eraser. You need pencils with erasers too, because you want to erase that so that when you rewrite, you can erase. And you know, because the first draft is not is not usable. Yes, ma'am. Where are we? Right here. Somebody has a mic. 
I, I do Two people have, have a mic. This is so cool. Two questions at the same time. I've never done this before. Yeah, all right, where do we want to go? This um, one and then, and then this one, okay. Man on the left, man or woman, I can't see, right, I'm well, sorry. Th th thank you, Mr. Patterson. It's nice to see you in person. I've seen your interviews over the years and I love your, uh, your sense of humor. I'll say that for, first of all, it's thank great. You. Um, and the cursing you like, yeah. <laughs> But and and my question is, of course, I'm a fan of the uh, the Alex Cross series. Kiss the Girls is my favorite. But my question for you You're a is: You're very sick person. <laughs> <laughs> um, in your writing now, how much input do you have for for your novels that go on to to be movies? Do you have inputs on the characters? And now, in your writing, in your later years, I guess. I do have you more. I have more input in Hollywood than I used to. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I've ever started a Hollywood novel, and I wouldn't, but I have the first line, hello, I lied. <laughs> it's a, and that's not fair, but it, it's a tough environment. And uh, I remember when they were doing um, Along Came a Spider, I think it was, and they, they asked me, how do you pronounce S-O-N-E-G? And I said, Sonegi. So of course, in the movie, they called it Sonji. So they just, you know, it is what it is. But the, the input in terms of the Amazon series, it was appropriate and good. And, uh, you know, I mean, they listened when, when, when they should. So that, you know, uh, and, and I'm, we're doing Women's Murder Club now. We're actually, the other thing we're doing now is a documentary on the Idaho uh, murders, the, the four uh, college kids that were killed out there. So we have some input on that. Um, and, uh, the um, Jane Smith is, uh, actually the Jane Smith, I, I love that 12, 12 months to live, and then eight months to live and four months to live. That's a really cool series, if you don't know. And we have, um, uh, they were, they're bit, two, two companies are bidding for it right now. And um, Maggie, who's my actress? Where's Maggie? Uh, Renee Zellinger. Renee Zellinger is attached. And um, uh, David uh, Kelly, the showrunner, and then and one of the two writers from Ozark. So it's a really good package. And so I'm hoping I have a big, big hopes for that. And there, see, I, I don't curse, and they leave. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I. We have one last question in the audience right now. Last, last question. Okay. Uh, how many books do you work on at once? How many books do I work on at once? All right, in my office right now. There are 31 live projects spread out on the tables. Thank you so much. You're the greatest. You're the best. Jacksonville, I'm doing the travel book here soon. And yeah. I, I've got to tell you, in, in, in my 20 years, I have never, oh my gosh, you took over. You wanted the stage for yourself. Is that what it was? No. You wanted me? That's what it was. I'm That's sorry. how it feels. I apologize. <laughs> No, he was great. Ladies and gentlemen, the James Patterson. Thank you. Thank you.